Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and of course, a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. This is Elizabeth Townsend Gard, your host, and I'm a law professor at Tulane University Law School and a faculty fellow at the A.B. Friedman School of Business at Tulane. And I just want a quilt. So today we have back um, Lynn Reinhardt and Pam Cobb from The Stitch TV. And they are talking to us about the process of getting ready for market and for them also festival. We're going to be at market. Um, that happens uh, October 26th. Um, 2019 in Houston. We'll have a booth and we're freaking out. So um, we talked to them about what they're doing and how we should get ready. Market is for um, business to business for um, quilt industry. That's the business to business and the, the quilt festival happens um, the next, like starting on Tuesday of the next week. Cool. Hi, good morning. How are you guys doing? I've, it's weird because I've been listening to you all morning from last night. So it's like, you know, oh. I have to talk and not just listen. (laughs) I have more stickers available if we want to pick that vibe up. (laughs) Nice. That's what I'm doing right now. It's so great. It was great. Your show's great. You know, it's just so easy to listen to and watch. You know, you just feel like you're hanging out and uh, it's really nice. All right. So my students don't freak out. Um, Tell me, I know who you are, but tell me your names (laughs) and where you're calling from so they don't freak out when they they do post-production. So I'm Pam Cobb. I am in the Atlanta, Georgia area. I'm Lynn Reinhardt, and I'm also in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Awesome. Okay. Well, what I thought we'd do today is, I think we did this last year. I want to talk to you about um, how you're feeling um, about market and festival, and then I want you to, um, and then I, I need a little bit of advice about what we're doing. That's so we won't be here long because I know you guys are really busy, um, but I appreciate you coming to chat and tell us so you're having you have a booth at market and at festival am i right yeah which is yes um, okay so tell just i know people know but just tell us what the difference is between market and festival so quilt market which happens starting friday the 25th is so scary 25th of october oh God, um, it's so with- soon <laughs> It's so terribly soon. I know. It's two weeks away. So in corporate terms, it's a B2B show. So a business to business show. Right. Market. And that lasts from Friday. It starts with education sessions. And then there's three days of kind of vending. And there's a trade a floor where people have booths and, you know, things happen there. Uh, and then it shuts down for a few days to rejigger some things. And then International Quilt Festival opens. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's a preview night on Halloween. Yeah. I might be missing that up. So. Well, it's it's the Wednesday before it, but right. I don't know what day that is. It's either the, yeah, I'm bad at math right now. I did all my math last night on Q. No, it's not Halloween. It's, it's the Wednesday. 30th. Yes, okay. the 30th. All right. Well, there you go. So that Wednesday night, there's a preview and uh, it's part of a big quilt show. Yeah. Is it the largest quilt show in the world? I don't know that it's the largest quilt show in the world. It's one of the largest in the United States for sure. It's huge. I mean, it's up there with all the others. Yeah. Right. And that's the consumer show. So there's the big quilt show in one area of this giant convention center. And then there are vendors selling direct to consumers in the other part. And isn't there like thirty to 40,000 people that show up for the quilt show? I mean, it's huge. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, not yeah, in so, good, I mean, it's a good way. Like people quilting, it's not, if you like, if you're okay with crowds, it's awesome. But if you're a little freaky about crowds, it gets kind of crowded. It's, you can't be in a rush because people will be in your way. Yeah. <laughs> and quilters, here's what I've known to go to all the quilt shows. They walk slow. You have to well, though, because you gotta you gotta own. like stroll, right? You gotta look at right. Stuff. You're looking at everything. You're distracted by all the pretty good stuff right. that are surrounding you. So there's through, no rushing out. through this. No, no, it takes days to get through it. Uh, although yeah. the preview night is pretty awesome because it's not that crowded, um, and yeah. so it's really kind of fun. I like preview night a lot. Well, that's a special ticket too. You have to pay more to be able to go to that. That's true. Oh, that's so. true. Yes. 
Oh, and I think we forgot to say, like, we're vending as the Stitch TV show. We just said our names. We didn't say, <laughs> like, why we know anything about anything. <laughs> That's right. We'll put that in the intro. So, <laughs> right. So the Stitch TV show is super awesome. Um, you guys are amazing. And you have patterns and classes and the show. And it's, um, I don't know. I just like you guys. Um, you guys are cool. And it's fun to hang out with you and feel like, you know, virtually that you're hanging out with you with, with you guys. So, Okay, so you're vending at both shows, which seems complete. Last year you didn't, right? Did you just do market last year? We just vended at market, and we were at festival for a couple of days. Lynn was teaching right. some um, in the community I space, that. right? Uh, and then I wandered around, and I like was a booth fairy right. for some people, some of our friends in the industry. So I would help check people out at the oh. Fomori booth. I stopped by and gave Bill Care, you know, a little bit of time to, yeah. to take a personal break, and I manned his booth for him. So good. it was just kind That's of fun so around. Sweet. That's nice. <laughs> That's good. Um, so, what made you decide to do both this year? I don't know. Stupidity, maybe. Uh... I, I, it was Lynn's idea. <laughs> and then I pushed the button, and then I said, "Oh crap! What did we just do?" <laughs> yeah. How are the two booths <laughs> different? Oh, goodness. Well, we don't actually have to carry inventory at market because most of the shops that are coming to meet the vendors are not expecting to take things home with them. Got it. So it's like the, you take an order, but then you ship it out later. And Got it. and so in prepping for festival, it was mm-hmm. like, oh, no, the people that are at festival like are customers and they actually just want to buy something and take it away with them. And if you don't yeah. have something for them, they're probably not going to buy it. They're going to go right. next door where other people manage to bring inventory and buy that. Got it. So you're bringing inventory. Will you only have the inventory out for mark for festival? Uh, we'll have samples out for market because we did figure out after our first year vending, like, oh, sometimes they want to touch and feel things, you know, the patterns, you kind of know what you're getting with that. But when there's a new product, yeah. um, it, it helps to have a couple samples there. That's very cool. Um, okay. Well, this is all very good. And how much is last minute and how much have you been preparing for a long time with the booth? I, I think, honestly, we started – you know, writing some of the patterns right after the last market was over. Yeah. Now, how far we got into that process, you know, got delayed. Yeah. But I would yeah. say we've been working on this for three months. I mean, yeah. since June. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. People don't realize. And how much of your sales come from having a booth at versus distributors? How much comes from this experience for the market? We will tell market? you after it's over. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because like right we've now, never vended at market or at festival before. So, right. you know, we're going into this like, a, you know, a little bit blind. I, I mean, and I think we've made some mistakes and I think we've, you know, <laughs> you know learned some things like yeah. shipping's expensive. Holy yeah. moly. Yeah. That's what you were saying last night on your show is that you kind of had to think, rethink it when you were trying to figure out how to get stuff there. Yeah. So when we were noobs last year at market and we were between two companies who were lovely um, in Mart who ended up sponsoring our show and we've got some new things coming out with them. But then on the other side of us was a company called Delaware Dry Goods. And these gentlemen showed up. I mean, it was like something from the Jetsons. They rolled in with like a case. And then they opened the case up and then the whole display just kind of like unfurled and everything was attached. And we're like, oh, (laughs) <laughs> this is magic <laughs> and it had shrink wrap wow so we were like which was our favorite thing oh, at yeah. the end of market really oh, yeah. we oh my gosh delirious and they had some leftovers so they gave it to us um along with a lot of very small lint rollers <laughs> that i still have yeah. um but go. i will say that pam and i um decided that shrink wrap was the best thing about shutting down your booth yeah and we may have overused yeah not to say i didn't personally buy a roll for us to use this year yeah. but interesting yeah very interesting but it's fun it's and just kind of casually talking with those gentlemen in their yeah. magic booth display they're like well you just you know you arrange a pallet and you ship some stuff out and we're like sweet uh so we had planned on that thinking there's some grown-up professional ladies totally. who can figure this out i worked for ups at one point in my life this can't be hard holy crap 
Uh, and part of the, the issue is because we're a home-based business, actually technically out of two homes, you know, we don't have a loading dock. Right. And so the kind of truck that would normally come pick up a pallet isn't equipped to just like roll up to your garage. They're like, well, how do we lift it up 40 inches to get it into the truck? Well, now there's charges for that. And now, yeah. So it just, the, the costs for that were, I would say four times what we were expecting, five times what we were expecting. Oh yeah, definitely. I was like, Oh gosh. And just like my face that day, I was just like fell. And then the adrenaline kicked in of like, how do we do this? Maybe I just tell Lynn that I'm sick and we just don't go at all. <laughs> totally. I get that. I totally, it's, people don't really realize how insanely overwhelming. Not, I mean, mentally, emotionally, physically, like it is, um, we did a booth last year, as you know, for the first time for festival. It took me like a month to recover afterwards. It was yeah. too much, you know? I mean, for me it, personally, it was just like. I mean, it was pretty and it was good and it was great, but oh my gosh, like it was exhausting. Yeah. I mean, I did, couldn't enjoy the show because it was just too much before, too much during, too much after. <laughs> it was like... And I have ex- a lot of experience in working conventions just yeah. from my day job and I work closely with an events team. Now, I've never been on the logistics side of it. Uh, on that part but it's uh, oh goodness like it, ooh, it's a lot and then you start thinking through like oh we have to order electricity now we have to get eight foot poles right. and we didn't realize last year we should have covered our poles so we had ugly poles in our booth last year yeah so interesting um well this year we're not going to festival we are going to market so we're going to have a small booth at market um and we need some advice so our booth is about copyright and trademark and patents and um, we'll have a sign that has help on, like, you can come ask any question you want. Um, we're not attorneys, but we can, we're, we're profess- I'm a professor, so you can ask and learn um, about things. Um, and we're not going to festivals, so we're just going for those short weekend, uh, because we, that 12 days, I mean, as I said, it was like a full month of recovery. It was way too much. It was just too much. So, and I have to be back for homecoming. So, um, so advice. So we are, we decided very last minute that we were going to have a booth. We have been very much like we're not having a booth because it nearly killed me last year, but we decided last minute that we are going to have a booth. And so now we're thinking about what we, what should we do or know about the booth? Can you talk me through, because I'm kind of a little bit of a panic, it sounds, I sound calm, but inside not so calm, about what we should be thinking about with this booth and what we should be bringing with us to the booth. What size booth do you have? 10 by 10. Okay. Last year we had 10 by 20 and it was great, but it's a lot. It's a lot. It's big. Oh, yeah. It's too big. I mean, it was really, really big. (laughs) For what you're trying to accomplish in terms of you want to have conversations with people about this. So I would try to set up like two cafe tables with two chairs each. Yeah. Just so you've got a space there in the booth. And then if there's overflow, you can like walk over to a break area or something, but then you lose travel time. Right. You might want to consider having a a place where you track scheduling. So if someone stops by, they're like, oh, I can't do it now, but could I come by like tomorrow at three that you could pencil them in. Oh, you're off the gun computer. It's not good. (laughs) We had some, we had some computer technology problems from the cat. Okay. Um, okay. So scheduling. Okay. We can do a scheduling thing. That's so even thing. if it's just like a note, like you go and make a spreadsheet with 15 minute time slots yeah. and then people can come sign up, but it's on them. Like you're not sending out reminders. Do not get yourself into that garbage because yeah. that's ugh. right. Okay, cool. Yeah, we could do that. Sign up. That's super great. Okay, we can do that. Wow. Cafe temples. Yeah, we could do that. Now they give you a table. Like we're going to have, so we're yeah. kind of excited we're going to have a couple of things that we're going to be um, promoting. Um, one is our new Playfair um, campaign, which is for shops. Um, and uh, we have these little um, laminated, like eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper that they can put up on their shop and gives notice to people about that they um, have a copyright policy and you can't do certain things in their shop. Um, and it allows them to tell people don't photocop- don't don't photograph that entire book. We abide by copyright law, and you're putting us in in, in jeopardy. So I think we are probably giving those out to shops. 
um, with the idea that if they um, put it up in their shop and do a um, like tag us and photograph it, um, then we'll put them on our website and we'll also um, be giving doing other things. So a certification program and all kinds of other things in the future. But this is our first step of just getting note getting notice into shops. Um, and we're and so, do you think we should be just handing them out? Should we be selling them? Like, what should we be doing with these kind of policy things? Um, if you're if so, in my experience in yeah. trade shows, and let me yeah. chime in here based on your thoughts too. Yeah. Um, it, that to me, because it's like a laminated thing, you've had to spend money to laminate it. It's more yeah. of a premium giveaway than like here's a card. Yeah. So I would engage someone in a conversation first before you hand that out. Got it. And we and don't just um, like hand them out to people walking by. Yeah, somebody suggested that we need to get their contact information so we can follow up and have them as part of our program that yes. um, that they're joining our um, play fair um, program. Do you so, all have you have an email news list? newsletter or anything we, we never use it but yes we do have an email yes we'll, we'll so start sh- to use it we just haven't had anything to say <laughs> well <laughs> but what you should be able to do kidding. is create a segment in there depending on how sophisticated it is yeah. in a custom sign up form yeah and if you have internet connectivity you could capture oh, like info specific to that list of like here's the play fair list oh got it and have okay, them sign so up just through like right. a custom form do you and that way you're not you having capture... to transcribe cool when you capture um uh, information at uh, the trade show, do you do it by having them, how do you do it? Do you do it by having an iPad there? Do you have them give them a card? Like, do you have a sign-up sheet that's just a, like on a clipboard? Like, what's All the of the way? above. You do? Yeah, because, you know, some people are going to have their cards and just hand it to you, so you want that. And some people are going to actually take time and sign a list. Yeah. Um, and then you know, when we do schoolhouse, we're going to collect cards. Collect cards, yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, so it's just the Playfair program is our first thing for shops. We've um, been testing it out. The shops seem pretty um, excited about it um, and that they have a resource then to, um, we're kind of working on the rest of it. So just getting the idea of who we are to the shops is kind of our first goal um, and then be able to, um, now the second thing is, I'm kind of excited. Um, we have written uh, at least the first book, all three books. We have five books total that we're doing. One is our copyright, our Just Want a Quilt Notebook, which you can keep track of copyright provenance. And Lynn was so kind, I emailed her, uh, texted her about a couple of questions on it. So we'll have that. Um, and we also will have probably our trademark one, uh, maybe our patent one. So we have Just Want a Patent, Just Want a Trademark, just want to create, which is a copyright book that will come out in January. The copyright notebook is done. Just want to brand all the legal issues for branding and uh, endorsements and working with companies. And there's one more, but I don't remember what that was. Oh, I guess there's five. That's it. So um, what should we be thinking about in terms of selling? We have never, we're not, I'm a law professor, so we don't really sell things. We just talk about stuff a lot. So um Thoughts about selling in the at market and what we should be bringing with us in terms of these books. Um, what should we think be thinking about as first time booth people? I would suggest so if you, in marketing terms, are you thinking about trying to sell all five as a bundle at one point? Are you interested in pre sales? Are we, you worried about gonna, covering printing costs up front? Um, like, good question. So uh, yes, pre sales. Um, we also are very, I mean, we will, we can have copies of them there. Um, we're not worried about covering their printing costs cause we've got that under control. Um, we're okay. still a little worried about pricing. We're not sure exactly what the best price is. We can talk about that in a second. Um, we will eventually bundle it into a big book of intellectual property. Um, mm-hmm. cause I think they all go together. Um, but not yet. So we'll have the individual ones. If you want to buy the individual, like you don't care about anything but trademark. So that's okay. They're all about, each one is about a hundred pages, so, um, so it'll and be the, a big book eventually. Um, yeah. Notebook meant to be like a place where they take it and write notes in uh-huh. it themselves. Yeah. Okay, so when you look at bundling all of them together, I might yeah. keep that one separate and spiral bound, and put okay. the other four in like a consolidated book because yeah. when you want to write in something, right. having to crack the spine is just uh-huh. kind of soul killing as a book lover. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. That's a good idea. We'll have to see if we can do that. Um, and do the other ones. Yeah, that sounds right. That sounds great. 
Um, so thoughts about uh, I mean, market and do we bring a ton of them? We just bring a no. few of them? No, we just bring a few. I would bring, if you have the notebooks ready, like that's the first one, yeah. I would bring more of those. Um, and then the others have three to five samples of. Okay. And then what you can do is say, you know, we'll be happy to ship this out to you because they don't want to lug books home either. Like right. they're not showing up to order 5,000 patterns and pack in their suitcase, right. you know. Exactly. I don't think right. anyone orders 5,000 patterns though. So please don't yeah. anyone play in their booth number. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So three to five samples, we can do that. And um, pricing on books. So we've had a lot of conversations with people. Do you have thoughts on pricing on patterns or pricing in general? Like, what are your thoughts about this? This is a question that comes up and people ask all the time. Sort of how do you strategize on, like, your classes, your books, your, like, how do you think about pricing? Well, I think we look at, you know, what the market will bear, too, in some extent. And, you know, what patterns are selling for by other pattern designers, Um, And there's different types of patterns, too. So there's just kind of your straight-up traditional piece pattern. And then there's some that are more complicated because it has – because of applique, you have, you know, maybe larger pages that need to be printed or multiple pages that need to be printed in order to do this quilt. And so those tend to be more expensive. Or if you're looking at foundation piecing and stuff like that. So I think you have to look at, you know, what type of pattern is this and what are others selling for at this, you know, type of pattern. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like fair market. And- right. And that, how do you, so when somebody, um, so Cheryl Sloboda, who's amazingly great, she was talking to us about keystoning and sort of how do you think about pricing, like taking your cost and doubling it for distributors taking the distributor cost and doubling it for wholesale and wholesale doubles it for retail. Do you feel like that's like a standard way people are looking at pricing or do you feel like that you can't do that because it gets too expensive too quickly? So we have a spreadsheet to no one's surprise that's ever listened to our show, at least me. Um, And, and we have products. So we know our cost, like our cost to get a pattern printed, our cost to get a prefused laser cut applique kit made. And there are some of those, like those applique kits in particular, where it, we would lose money if we sold through a distributor because what we would have to discount to to sell right. to the distributor, we would we would lose two dollars every time we sold it. And that's right. well, you can't well, do it. So you only can't available do it. exclusive through the Stitch TV show. Right. So yes, that definitely has to play in. Now, that being said, like quilt patterns is not a way to you know retire rich. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you, yeah. And, and given the specificity of what you all are doing and that there's not much, I don't think there's anything else out there on the market. Yeah. Like you can have a bit of a premium to that of like, well, right. where else are you going to get your quilt and copyright info? Nowhere. Right. You know? right. Yeah. What, some Google article? No, right. not helpful. Right, right, <laughs> right. exactly. Right. So, I mean, I think, and it's funny because law books are, per- I mean, law books. Oh, they're insane. They're I remember insane. college books and just right. thinking, oh, I could eat yeah. or... I could buy my calculus book for exactly. two hundred and ten dollars. It's funny because we're take because what we've um, Ricardo's our um, Ricardo Gonzalez is our um, editor in chief of our new publishing arm, which is super exciting. Um, but we really have sort of recognized as we've been writing these books is that it started in quilting, but they're really everybody needs the same information. So we're going to do a second set of these that are, um, and then also for students. And uh, so the student version will have cases and it'll be bigger and it will be far more expensive, right? Because they're used to paying because you can yeah <laughs> because you can and because they're i mean some there's some are going like open access and, and cheaper but it is a, a market so we are definitely doing that as our second round of all this stuff because what what, what, what i'm excited about with these books is that you know i've taught all these i've taught this stuff for like over a decade right and we teach it a certain way and it's really boring and it doesn't really help students right because they get through and they know all the doctrine but they really don't know how to do it and by having to think about you and Lynn and all these other people reading these books, um, super smart, but not smart, don't, you don't know the law, it's totally changed, totally changed how I look at, at intellectual property in each field. 
and they're very practical and they're very sophisticated. They're not like, because we also looked at all these help, help books that when you actually looked at it, you're like, I don't even know how to do it still. So uh, it's really changing my way of thinking about the field, about really helping people. And mm -hmm. um, it's really cool. So it's kind of an exciting moment of like, I'm super like squee inside. Like I'm so excited that this stuff is going to be available. Um, but now it's sort of thinking through how to get it to people. Um, because and so many people are not trademarked. Did you guys trademark your stuff? So many people don't federally trademark their work, which is kind of remarkable to me. So we're trying to sort of encourage people because it's only, you know, 225 plus the, the book, you know. So. Yeah, there's a part of my day job because I work for a very large cybersecurity company. And part of my job is to like tell stories about that stuff. Yeah. And when you start getting into like malware and all that, yeah. I describe it as being the nerd Lorax. Yeah. And you are being the copyright Lorax. <laughs> totally, exactly. And it's it's really interesting, isn't it? So, okay, so uh, we're going to bring a couple samples. We're going to bring some stickers. We, we decided we're going to make stickers because we like our... our um, and we're also doing a new... You know, people can pick up a sticker. They're not going to really do anything with it. But, you know, it's not, it doesn't cost much. And you need some sort of swag. So it seemed like the cheapest. And we're going to have beads again. We'll have our beads. Because <laughs> we have a lot left over from last year because I overbought. Um, I do that a lot. Um Oh, I once overbought for a ladybug party, ladybugs oh. for oh. a five-year-old party. We had like, you know, 10,000 ladybugs for like 20 oh children. It was really terrible. Um, not that many, probably 4,000 ladybugs. Um, okay, so we're in the booth. Tell me more what else we should be thinking about with the booth. Well, so in marketing parlance, you're thinking about the buyer journey. So mm -hmm. they stop okay. by the booth. What's yeah. their call to action after they leave your booth? And how do you support that to make it as easy as possible? Okay. So tell me more about the call to action. What is your call to action? <laughs> well, ours is, here is a sheet, uh, you know, like a catalog sheet of all of our patterns. Hey, you don't have time to dwell now. Take that with you. If you see something interesting, it's got our contact info. Okay. We can do that. Um, Alternately, it could be like, hey, just go watch the show or play the show in your booth or, you know, here's how to host a view party just to get word about our show out there, which right. also helps in addition to having yeah. the patterns. Okay. So for you all, you're trying to get them to think about copyright, encourage right. good behavior in their store, mm -hmm. and ultimately you want them to buy a book. Buy the book, right. Because you know, money. Right. I know you're academic, but like we're thinking in business terms. Like, no, no, and we're we have, have to be self sufficient thing. by next year. Yeah. So I mean that's yeah. part of the it's no an money. entrepreneurial thing. We do have to sell <laughs> stuff. Now, how do you um how do you take orders and how what kind of online how do you do your business online? We've been setting up stuff already. Um and <laughs> and then also people then will have to like if they order stuff, you have to ship it to them, which is like yeah. a whole nother thing, right? Like oh. people are like, Oh, I yes. want that, that thing. Yes. So we have a love-hate relationship. <laughs> well, I do. Lynn may have more fondness for it. <laughs> no, no, I, I agree with you. <clears throat> the orders come in. Well, I would say 90% of the orders that we get through our website are downloadable. Oh, so, cool. you know, because they're buying a pattern, they download the pattern. They have it right there. Yeah. They print it out. Done. The part where the love-hate relationship comes in is, you know, we sell these pre-fused appliques or we sell rulers or some other, you know, things like that. Those are the things that have to be shipped out. And so usually Pam sees all the orders come in because I don't pay attention to that, <clears throat> which she knows. And then I get it. Then I get it because she works full time and I do this full time. But I'm, you know, I'm involved in other things like sewing up stuff and recording all our video classes, recording all the video classes. And so I, I do a lot of stuff, but it's kind of behind the scene different than what Pam does. Um, and so then I get an email or a text usually. OK, this is what happens. Pam calls me on her drive home from work almost every day. <laughs> I like that. I get that. With, Hi, I'm in the car. Right. Hi, I'm in the car. And and we have, you know, a 30-minute business meeting. While she drives. Of, That's great. While she's in traffic. And and, and I kind of know when to expect it. Or in, and I say it's every day. It's not every day. But it's a lot yeah. of days, especially the past two months. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And 
you know, it's just we have touch bases of, okay, did you see this came in? We need to get that mailed out. And then if she tells me that, because I, I pay no attention to sales. I really don't. It's not my thing. Yeah. And Pam said, and then I go look for the order and I find the address and I print it out and I put it in a mailer and I mail it out because I have all the inventory at my house since I'm the one, I do all the lectures. So I, I travel around and do the speaking and teach workshops and stuff like that. So I have all the merchandise or, you know, inventory here. Um, So I'm the one who has it and that can mail it out. And it drives me nuts. I don't know why, because it's out of my, it's out of my regular routine kind of thing. But, you know, you do want to sell it. You do want right. people to have it. So that's the love hate thing of it. Yeah. Got it. Well, it, my love hate is more on the tech side. So our website's built on WordPress uh-huh. and we use a plugin called WooCommerce. You do. Yeah. And we, before market last year, because right now it's just set up for, customer sales. So patterns, 10 bucks, you pay your 10 bucks, you get the thing. Well, if you want to sell wholesale, right. you're charging five bucks. Right. Well, you don't want the looky blue quilters just to come order $5 patterns because they're listed. <laughs> like you're just selling that only to wholesale customers right. and no offense to the quilters that are interested in that, but like we had to segment our customer base. Right. And so we had to pay extra for a wholesale plugin that would allow us to designate certain products are only available to wholesale customers. And that's the shop programs and like print patterns. Cause we don't sell print patterns. Yeah. Our website to consumers. We got only it. sell the digital to them. Got it. So then you got, um, Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Well, I'm at your website. So how do you feel like, how do you feel about shipping when you ship things to people? <laughs> So we charged a flat rate, which is, it averages out to be okay because some orders end up costing more to ship and some end up costing less than that. Yeah. So it's not great. We didn't, I just, I found it super complicated and no matter how many times I put in product specs to say like, Hey, this applique kit weighs this much. It's like, cool. That's still going to be $22 to ship. I'm like, that is not how shipping works. And so we just like put a stake in the ground and said, we charge $10 for shipping unless it's one of our um, merchandise items, which comes uh, is back in fulfilled by a company called Printful. So it's printed on demand, like t-shirts and leggings and stuff. Yeah. And they have like the magic shipping algorithms to calculate that. Right. So the so, t-shirts and that kind of stuff is right. just coming from Printful and then right. you integrate it. Yeah. Yeah. So Interesting. we charge a flat rate and we say it'll be shipped. Um, it is USPS, you know, Yeah. priority rate. Um, I guess we could ship media mail, but I just know from experience of my days of buying books on eBay, like media mail's can be a little dodgy sometimes. Yeah. Like I, I do like the U.S. priority rate because I can go get the packages. Yeah. And it's really e- – the U.S. Um, post office website is pretty easy once you have an account set up. Yeah. That yeah. you can do the click and ship, and I just enter in and get charged, and that works out really well. So that part is – I've figured out the process for me, so that part's been better. Um, I have to admit the first few times we did it, it was more of a scramble, but I think that's everything with, when we do business, it's like, you know, I know we're going to learn at festival what we need to know for next time. So how are you taking orders at festival? Like when, if someone says, yes, I want those patterns, are you doing it? Do you have on a computer or you have a form? Like, what do you, what so is your strategy? At, we found at market last year that, you know, we were prepped and ready for like online orders. Nobody wanted to do that. Yeah. So we had a printed out order form and we would check stuff off of what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And I went then and entered them later, like after the show closed into the online system and generated logon credentials for them. Because at that time, our shop patterns were digital only. So they would log in and download the PDF of the pattern files and the shop info and everything for it. But we've figured out a rate where we can um, 
send them a print copy of it if they just prefer to get it already printed and then they make copies as they need to for like a block of the month program. Um, and then we work with our fulfillment partner, 77 Peaches, AKA our friend Ray. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> and then she knows like, oh, I'll expect orders to come in at this time. And then she'll fulfill and handle the shipping and then bill us for what that shipping cost is. Interesting. Now, when you say that the patterns, the shops are, are you, you're selling physical patterns but you're also selling the block of the month club for the shop the shop gets a license to are you are you pricing it for them to do as many as they want or yes yeah so could you can't control it so it doesn't make any sense to sort of no yeah and is that a different price than an individual pattern i would imagine it is yeah um so our block of the month programs are based on the shop gets specific instructions and it's designed in a way that they can copy them easily. So we're really taking into account how they do business. So we not only give them tips on if they buy a block of the month program, they get individual sheets for each month. That's easy to copy. They get um, a, a, a document with shop tips of, how to scale how much how much voltage they need to have and how many kits they can cut out of bolts yeah. for the program. They get um, each individual month, a lot of them have tips on, hey, selling this ruler, upselling this would help, you know, your sales. Tips on that. That's um, great. That's so great work. it's a lot of our shop programs are designed in a way that, the shop can spend the money with us, yeah. but they ultimately make more than that back. Interesting. And so. they're upselling from what they're giving away with the block of the month kind of program. Traditionally, block of the month programs have a, uh, for a consumer. So if you're a customer of the shop and you're going to participate, you usually have a buy-in. Right. Let's say it's $10. Uh-huh. So I'm buying in $10 to be a part of this program. But I show up every month and I get a new block with new instructions right. and new fabric. Nine times out of ten, that's free. Yeah. As long as I complete my previous block. Right, right, right. So try to get you in the shop is what... It, I'm, you're getting me in the shop. And then what, what shops should do is they should, you know, upsell at that meeting yeah. that they have when the customers are with them. Hey, here's the new fabric. Hey, here's a ruler that would be really helpful for this block. Hey, you can buy these extra fat quarters and practice and do another block and do the same quilt in a patriotic form. Yeah. You could do, you know, so there's a lot of ways to sell right. to the the customer from your free program. Yeah, interesting. So interesting. Very cool. Um, okay, so we're going to have a sign. Do you guys have signs? Did you have like a fancy sign printed? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Uh, working on that this weekend. We're working on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we're going to decorate the booth with quilts from the Quilting Army because they've been making all kinds of quilts. So we'll have a pretty booth, but then we'll put our signs over it so that we're not just like dull, boring booth. Any thoughts about that? Yes, thoughts. So, yeah. But we're not selling the patterns. That's the thing. That's the trick is right? people are going to walk up and think, but oh, you're I selling the this patterns. pattern. Right. This is the problem. Uh. I know. So that's the only thing. But if we don't, then we'll be a very we'll be the most boring booth there, right? Because we we'll be the most boring. We've seen some things. We've seen some things. <laughs> the other thing I was thinking about, I don't know if I can do it, is make a gargantuan quilt that says "Copyright Trademark Patent" as the quilt. Yes, that's you know, the dream. Right, the big letters. Yes. Yeah, but that means like getting it done. So could make it. Yeah. It's yes. just the question, could you make it in two weeks? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that the problem is that we're doing so many other things. That's the problem, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, That's like, always the problem. We got, we're it is. Proofing one of, I'm trying to get the trademark book. We're, we're getting the copies of the copyright book. That's pro- not a problem. We've got two more books that need to go in. So that's the, can we get that done and then have a little bit of time to sew? Um, but I don't know. We'll see. I figure we're just going to throw a bunch of quilts in the car and then see how it goes. <laughs> Because I mean, we that's don't kind of our plan, right? Yeah. <laughs> cool. 
cool. Now, in terms of putting the quilts up, is there any... Last year, they gave us these little hooks because we were in a particular area that we had to use. Is there anything we should know about hanging the quilts there that we don't know? Do we have to bring stuff? I should probably yes, ask. Yes, you do. Yes. And you're not allowed to pin anything to their curtains. Right. So I should ask Bob about that. What do you use to hang You have to stuff? request extra. Like you have to physically request... Like, could you please put these additional poles up for me so we can hang things from it? And it's $14 and 25 cents a pole. Um, (laughs) And how many poles do you, like, is it? You have to like frame out the entire thing. You're basically building a very tiny skeleton inside your booth in order to do that. Okay. Well, I need to talk to him because I have no idea what that means. Um, But it's uh, in your uh, vendor service kit that you got. We're not a vendor (laughs) and we don't get a kit. So we are... We're, yeah, could you, you send it to me? Can you yeah, send I'll forward you the email okay, we got. Cool. Yeah. Because ours is, um, we're different. I don't know what hmm. we are. We're kind of like a public service because I'm ah. teaching at Threads of Success. So the yeah. idea is that they, I, we needed a place for people to come ask more questions and have a space for us. So we're really there just to be like, hey, what's your copyright problem? Or what's your trademark problem? Um, yeah, you probably should see a lawyer, you know, like that kind of thing. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so we're not really, I mean, we're vending, but not really like a little bit, right? We've got a couple of little books if people want to buy them, but we're not like vendor per se, which is a little bit different. You know, we're kind of like last year. We didn't really sell anything, although we did make money last year. So we had these ridiculous, um, scraps that people sent in. Yeah. Yeah. We made like $3,000 off of scraps. Sweet. It was a dollar back. That was so insane, but people went crazy for them. Oh, yeah. It nearly killed me because I had to put them all together. So I, uh, I, I like, think I have kid. some. Yeah, you actually. do? Yeah. yeah I mean, my kid and my law students, we all put them together with Judy Walker, but it was too much. So we're not doing that this year. So, so your cheapest way to hang a quilt mm-hmm. is invest in some S hooks that fit over the poles. The poles okay. are an inch and a quarter in diameter. Okay. And you can find those on Amazon. You can get like, I don't know. 25, 30 of them for 20 bucks or so. Okay. And then just some big binder clips. And then you put the clips on your quilt. You're going to need at least three per quilt. So it doesn't sag in the middle. Okay. And then you put the S hooks over yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the booth thing. And then you just, boop, that's okay. your cheap way to hang a quilt. Okay, cool. That sounds insanely <laughs> great. That's good. See, this is why you're on. Uh, <laughs> so what else do we have to do? We are going to do some stickers. We might do some beads. A couple of books, and then we're just there hanging out. So scheduling, so people, if want, people want to come one-on-one and chat with us. We also think that we are kind of looking inward, and so that was one of the questions I had in terms of the books that we're bringing. I think in some way we're there for the industry as much as the shop owners. So we're really trying to say to people that have booths, did you register your work? Like, it doesn't, I know you think it's going to cost a lot, but it really, if you do our system, it costs you $225. And like, it's really important to do that. Like you're spending all this time, register your work for trade, trademark, right? Register your federal trademark. Um, you know, put, you know, once a year, um, take all those patterns and register them at the copyright office. It matters. It really matters, especially because the law changed last year. So you have to have a registered, you have works, so you have to sort of have a certificate. So someone like rips you guys off, like a big company comes along and takes your stuff. You have to have the registration all the way through, didn't used to be that way and that takes up to 18 months so you or you pay $800 to get it like through fast but that's what we're trying to say is like look you care so much about your businesses do the basics just do the basics register your trademark and copyright every every year and and do your trademark work so that's kind of our message is and maybe we should just put that on a form like do your do your I think we need a copy of these books Elizabeth really (laughs) I yeah, that, we see? could do a book club on copyright. Totally, books. I would love that. That would be great. <laughs> Let's do that. No, I mean, that's, hey, that's you know? a good idea, Pam. Seriously. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, we'll do a form then for people of like just like these are like the two base, and then also hashtags. If you're using a hashtag now, it is a source identifier. So, like, what's my stit or uh, my not my stitch? That's another company, but my, the Stitch TV is your source identifier. So if some, and then, so you don't want someone else coming along and saying, uh, using it as a source identifier. Now, if someone says, 
stitch TV, like stitching while I stitch TV, like I like I'm sitting in front of the TV and I'm always doing it stitch TV. That's just scriptive. That's fine, right? Anybody yeah. can say just want a quill, but if someone's using it as a source identifier and I see it. I want to send them a cease and desist letter. And the problem is if it's not federally trademarked, they're going to be like, ha funny. Like, shut up. Like, you don't have any reason to tell me not to do it. So it's this kind of really interesting, like, the infrastructure of creativity, of making sure you just cover those basic, those basic elements. And we've seen it with people, especially with the hashtags right now, where big companies start to use their, what they're known for. Um, and the question is, like, can you write a nice letter and say, please don't use it? Sometimes that works. But sometimes you have to be like, I have a federally registered trademark and I'm not afraid to sue you, right? Stop using it. Um, and you need to be able to figure out how to do that really quickly so that, because, you know, you need to do it within the first 24 hours of them starting to use it so you can shut it down. So, um, so yeah, so that's, um, that's what we're all about. I think that's what the books are helping with. And then eventually, probably starting in next year, um, we'll have a service, we'll have a help, a help space because we keep fi- having people like, well, I don't know how to do this or I don't have an attorney. And so the idea is to have, to be subscribed to us. Like we know you, we know who you are. We're, we're not, we can either act as your attorney or we can act as your friend. Like, you know what I mean? Like not attorney prices. Um, but then have ER services so that if at, in, at 2 a.m. you see somebody has ripped off your pattern, you can call us and we can sort of start the process and work with your attorney or be your attorney. Um, to get it, it shut down because it's really about fast in this day and age it's all about getting it done quickly um, and so that's what we're seeing as well is that people need this stuff done really yeah because you know? we see all the time you know I, I'm on the quilt designers Facebook page yeah, and right. you know there's there's these um evil companies <laughs> I don't have a better way uh that will take pictures of anybody's quilt and then try to sell it. Right. This is, um, we talked to um, somebody who uh, works at a very big studio um, in LA about this problem when it started to happen. So for those listening, what Lynn's talking about is they, it's fraud, right? So they're taking oh, a photograph please. of what you're doing. All they're trying to do is get your credit card number. So if you see a car- quilt out there and they're saying $25 or $50 for a full made quilt, which is what they normally do, right? And they take these ridiculous pictures that um, that are somebody else's work. Um, this has been happening in LA forever. So they've been doing that with CDs and other things where you are like only $4 and they take your credit card information and then they do terrible things to your credit cards. Right. Um, And so they've moved to crafts pretty recently. And so they said, you know, you have to, you report it to, I think is the FBI that you report it to, but you, it's, it's a big problem. Um, And so, you know, if it happens to you, it isn't like you can, you can get a notice and take down to the, the platforms. You do that and you notify the authorities, but it's about, credit card fraud it's really not i mean copyright infringement's part of it but it's fraud right yeah and that's why i said these evil companies they are because they, they really they're are. not no they're they just, are not they're super representing yes. yeah yes they do get qualified they are the they get the stamp of evil right too. yeah <laughs> so. so i don't know so that's what we're at but we're excited because i think what market does and i, and I don't know if you feel this way too is that it pushes you to finish so that yeah. you're sort of moving to this next stage of whatever you're doing because you know that there's this impending booth. Um, yes. And I think that's what's happened with the books is that we are and, – and it's exciting. I mean, I think, you know, you got to sit down and just do the work. And that's sort of what market does is makes you do the work, at least for me. So. No, I'm with you. I agree. It There's a deadline pending and everything has to be done by the time – the van leaves the driveway, so. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, the van leaves the driveway before I get on the plane, so. Really? I get, like, a little, like, eight-hour vacation. You do? I'm like, oh, it's all done. I'm, uh, there's nothing else I can do. That's really good. I like that. <laughs> well, I have that, too. It's just I'm driving. Driving it. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. So, when well, you- it happened because, you know, Pam has a full-time job, and she doesn't have as much time off. Oh, and you guys are there yeah. for so long, so. Right. Adding the so, extra stuff is not good, you know? Yeah. So she's going to fly in and out, and I'm going to drive our stuff in and out. And so it's very it'll yeah. be fun. Interesting. 
I have a bunch of books lined up to listen to, so I'll be good. Very cool. All right, so anything else that we should be – I'm so excited to talk with you. It feels real. You always feel make me feel grounded. <laughs> You know, like it's going to be okay, maybe, maybe. It might be okay. We have a we have a, a policy between the two of us that yeah. no one can, we both cannot be panicked at the same time. I like exactly. that. I like that. So, so I have to tell you a story about, so my kid came last year. Okay, so she only came for festival and she was really good at selling things. Like I was so shocked that Sid is like this great, like she's got this way about her, which I don't. I scare people off when I sell. Like I'm, they're like literally running from me when I'm like, hey, you need to do this. Um. So anyway, so we get through with the market and she like, we're in the hotel where it's like, you know, impossible to get out because it's really hard to pack up and you're exhausted and everything. And she like is on the floor in the bathroom and she just like flops down. Like she should have been like in a prom dress or something. And then just cries like really, really, really hard. Like I've never seen her cry before. And was like talking about school and like everything. But it was like, yeah, like that's what happens at the end of these things. Like you, like she's like, you know, she was 15. She just like, does whatever she does but oh my god it was like so dramatic and it happened it was only like maybe four minutes of crying it was like a really long cry but it was really like that's like the essence though i think like it's cathartic yeah right it was like oh all this stuff has just happened i just need to let it out yeah Yeah. it's just a lot coming at you so oh elizabeth did you make it to house of pie last year we did not make it to House of Pie. We went to Denny's. She she, she vetoed oh, no. House of Pie. Oh no! Oh. Gotta go to House to of go Pie. Denny's is not even close. Yeah. Denny's doesn't hold the candle. They're not she, in the same a, room. She's a Denny's no. girl. She, so yeah, we'll try to do that. We went to IKEA twice. <laughs> well, I'm, that's just booth setup. <laughs> yeah, well, we're right. And so we when we lived in London, and then we lived in Seattle. So so IKEA was in all these different places we lived. So and she was little, like two and three. So we would go and eat there and like acclimate to like, look, it's just like, it's just like London, baby, right? So she sees Ikea as like home because like we just, because it's like the best way to acclimate a two-year-old to like, nothing's changed. There's an Ikea with meatballs. See, it's all good. So we went to (laughs) Ikea and had meatballs. So yeah, it was like a thing. Anyway. All right. Well, um, where do you guys, uh, maybe you don't want to say, do you stay in an Airbnb? Do you stay close to the thing? Where do you guys choose? There's a two two different options, right? One is an Airbnb, which is probably a little less expensive, has a kitchen. And then some people, we're staying um, close. We're staying in one of the main hotels because I want to be able to go take a nap if I need to. Yeah. Um, we are in option C. Yes. Oh, what's option C? Phone a family. friend. Family. Ah, that's nice. Family's nice. I like that. <laughs> we don't have family in, in Houston, but I like that. That helps. And it keeps your costs down too, which is – and you're there for so – I mean – yeah. 12 days is a – people don't know. 12 days are a really lot. Okay, last question. I know we've been on way too long. Schoolhouse. So Schoolhouse is really fun and really overwhelming. Like not just a little overwhelming. It's like a thousand different things happening in all these different rooms. Um, and it's so shop owners can sort of see what the new stuff is. Do you have a strategy for dealing with Schoolhouse? Like as a person – as an attendee? This, I, this will be my third time. The first time was fun. The second time, I had a panic attack and just sat there. and was like, there's too many people, too much going on. There's too much. Like, it was too much. There's a lot of flurry. It's very flurry. It's like yes. so much flurry. Um, what are your thoughts about? What are you supposed to be doing? Like, what's the strategy? If there's shop owners out there, people going, what's the shop? What's the thought, thought about that? Well, if there's shop owners, they should come see our two schoolhouses that we're doing. Totally. 1135 and 1210 in room 360E. They're both around social media and videos and upselling. Awesome. Now, do you feel like at Schoolhouse you have to give them, like, there's a lot of goodie giving away at Schoolhouse. Do you feel like you have to do that Mm -hmm. or you're not worried about it? We're going with the giving them knowledge. What we did. And stickers. Yeah. What we didn't optimize last year was selling our patterns and programs as part of our schoolhouse because we came in thinking we're just going to help educate them about social media about right. and and we had pictures of our quilts in the presentation but we right. didn't they you want know, they're there to buy them. stuff right they're they're to sort of see what their shops are like and what to do except and all that. 
what we heard was, oh, this was the best schoolhouse because I actually learned something. Nice. All the other ones are structured around selling, even I know, though we right? sign up to give them, they're like, you should be doing instruction and right. it shouldn't just be a sales pitch. Right, right, right. We went to one that was similar in description to one of ours and we we're like, let's check out the competition. Yeah. And it ended up being a 20 minute pitch about a fabric line and Ugh. then five yeah. minutes of like, uh, here's how my husband built. Yeah. It's so weird, isn't it? It's so bizarre. Yeah. So, so interesting. Well, my, my first piece of advice for you, Elizabeth, yes. is Beyonce. Beyonce. What I have learned in yes. attending 40,000 person conferences for yes. my day job is I have to channel Beyonce and put on, pardon my language, the bitch stare straight ahead, <laughs> look to my destination. And just not walk, worry about it. Make your Don't, own wind in your I hair think, and like, you just go. As I think like whatever... I am. I don't know what I am. I don't know if I'm an introvert or extrovert, but I feel like I suck that all that energy gets like my energy gets sucked out by yes. all the other people's an energy. Yes. You're an introvert. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like exhausted by the end of the day. Yes. You know, like yes. I feel like I've been sucked, like the water and the, my, all of my lively fluids are gone, you know. There's nothing wrong with a five minute cry in a bathroom. Yeah. See, <laughs> Sid has a, Sid's got it. Sid knows what she's doing. <laughs> She always does, though. You know, kids know what they're doing. Um, okay. But uh, I think our approach this year is going to be, you know, we're definitely going to be education. Yeah. Because that's important. Yeah. But at the same time, we are going to promote ourselves more so um, in a fashion. Got it. But not do a sales pitch. Um, yeah. So we will okay. give away stickers and we are going to collect business cards. Yeah. Cool. But, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, I don't know. This is a whole thing. Yeah. We do not As an have attendee, anything. like, what are you trying to get out of it? Are you there Me? to, like, hear all the product pitches? Or are you there to um, we're check out how other under- people sell? Good question. So I think we are there to observe the quilt industry. That's what we've been okay. doing for two years. And that helped me write the books. So it really does inform kind of, we're there to observe. You know, we're there to experience it. We're there to sort of see... Um, all that. So, um, yeah, so I don't think we're, I mean, sure, the sales stuff, yeah, we're just sort of there to understand it and sort of understand what, I think this industry is such a great a microcosm of other industries. Um, and so it that the fact that you're all in one room for three days is pretty awesome. Um, and as I said, what we've learned from this industry applies to pretty much every industry we see. And so yeah. we're just there to ex- observe and scare people, I guess, because, like, I'm kind of shocked that people, I mean, we did a study, we're not releasing it, we know who has registered their works, registered their marks and hasn't from last year. We, we looked it up. So we know what's going on with people. We also know, strangely, a lot of information about copyright, of who's registering their copyrights and who aren't, and you'd be shocked at what's going on on that side of it, which I think is really interesting. Um, one thing I will say is, um, you know, Jen King, while well, we did a, a um, sew along as our first sew along, because mm-hmm. everyone wanted a gypsy wife. That's fine. Well, it turns out I'm kind of shocked by this because people were like, oh, are you giving away too much of the pattern? Because we were teaching people. So the idea was Gigi was teaching our law student how to quilt using this. So she would like, here's how to do, like, she didn't know, like, like, here's how to put a strip together, right? Just basic things, right? And we weren't doing the, the book. But we got some backlash of like, oh, well, that's not fair. You should buy the book, blah, blah, blah. Well, of course, they're buying the book. Jen Kingwell has not registered her her book at the Copyright Office, which to me is completely shocking. So this is a book that's out there in all kinds of ways. If we did copy it and put it on the internet, she would have to get a register. She's like, okay, she's foreign. That's fine. But she wouldn't get any statutory damages. Like this is just like basic hygiene. It's like not brushing your teeth. Like just like take $35 and register your trademark. I mean your copyright. It kind of sort of like – so we've seen a lot of that in this industry. And it's true of our, our industry here, industries in Louisiana too. But because of the internet, it sort of changes all of it, right? Like the ability for people to rip you off is so easy now that you just do the basics. So that's what we've been doing some research on. So we're going to do more – observing that's what we're doing we're observing and then we're writing and helping people we're not trying to scare people but we're just trying to sort of be like be be a little tougher put a little more armor on your ip armor um and uh, it'll be good so anyway so yeah isn't that weird don't you think that's weird the gypsy wife isn't registered at the the copyright office the how big it is 
Really? Because she's um, she's a foreigner. Why would you think about filing U.S. copyright? And um, and I do want to reframe it for you. You're like, yeah. it's not that big a deal. Like it's only two hundred twenty five dollars. Like um, that is a lot of patterns that I have to sell to cover that cost. Yes. I'm going to spend all my money up How front much... to protect stuff that may not even sell. Yes. Yeah, so there's two things. So so trademark <laughs> is a one time thing, right? It's just yes. your Stitch TV. So it's a one time fee, um, and it protects your business. Um, the copyright stuff you can probably do like once a year for the, between 30 and $50 and sure a you piece. don't No, not a piece, not a piece. You can do it as a collection so you can do, huh. put all of it together and then just, yeah. So, and we also see with the fabric companies, cause we're talking some like, um, some, I won't say who, but some, re- some register every single line, um, under copyright and others wait to see if there's infringement and then they pay the $800 because they're big enough. They're not going to register until there's a problem, and that makes sense. Um, for the we saw this with photographers; they weren't registering their works, and then people were stealing them, and then they were in trouble. So, I mean, yeah. I guess the thing is sort of like how important, how much do you care about someone stealing your work, and then is it worth the thirty-five or fifty dollars to annually register those patterns so that they're they've got federal protection for copyright? Yeah, and you that's know? what I was misunderstanding. Of yeah, like, oh, no, fifty dollars to protect a pattern that may not even sell. No, no, I think there's. I mean, and that's kind of what the, the just want to create book is about is really about like really practical things like that of like, and you can do it yourself. You don't have to hire an attorney. It's a super simple form. It's so super stupidly simple. Um, and so you know, what sort of thinking about that now doesn't matter. It only matters. There's new legislation that's um, small claims court. So if it goes through the small claims court legislation, you still have to have a registration certificate to bring somebody to small claims. And so we'll see if that, and we'll see if that matters. But, you know, that's kind of my thing. Like, what'd you call it? The nerding out thing? Like, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, the nerd Lorax. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that the, going back to Jen Kingwell, so what I thought was so weird about this, because we had looked into it, is this is a very, 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 very popular pattern. And if it was read, if she had published it with a publishing house, she would they automatic. And, and if you write a book, they're gonna the copyright's gonna be protected, right? Tula Pink writes a book, it's gonna get protected. Um, but because she didn't do that, maybe I don't I don't know how they're printing those. I can't remember. They don't like U.S. copyright. Everybody knows. Like if you know anything, like you'd register it in the U.S. because that's where all her that's like a huge amount of her business. So, you know, yes, she could go to court as a foreigner and not register it, but she doesn't get statutory damages. And statutory damages are $150,000 for willful infringement. So if someone like me took it and, like, took off the copyright notice and blah, 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 $150,000, right? So she doesn't have to prove her actual damages. Like, it's good. It's good. And it's good for pattern makers, right? So someone takes your pattern, takes off that copyright, like, rips it off and puts their own stuff on, and it's registered, yeah, you can tell them we're suing you for willful infringement and it's going to be $150,000 and they'll probably settle, right? Because they'll be like, the courts are going to be like, you ripped off the copyright notice and made it your own, like clear cut, right? Yeah. So I think there's just strategies and I think, I know I'm going on and on, but I think that what I really think what our purpose in this world and sort of being part of this world right now for however long that is, is just to help people, like we're norming the the... We're seeing that we're norming the behavior of people right now because I see it on our Facebook group where they're like, mm. you cannot do that. Like they'll be like, you can't make a copy for your friend and and then or make a copy and then give it to your friend. You can't do that. So we're seeing or, oh, that's fair use or that's for sale. So we're trying to now norm the industry because I think the industry is also a little bit behind as, it, as well. But the the people we're seeing, the, they're getting it. Like the regular quilters get to respect your copyright and to respect your patterns, which I think is really, really cool. So that's like the, really the essence of it is sort of can you take a, the basics of it and norm and help a community sort of not be so bitchy about like people are stealing stuff and like actually be proactive about keeping that from happening. So, so that's our little, that's my soapbox. But I don't know. So I told somebody else that like something terrible happens. Like people email, call me all the time with their like horror stories now. Like I'm like, go get a lawyer, right? Like, um, and um, a lot of times it's like this stuff that just can be like prevented with, again, if you build up a huge following, like somebody bought, built up a gargantuan following, 
And then something happened. And it was like, well, did you trademark it? They're like, no. I'm like, how much time did you spend on that? Do you know trademarking takes you about 30 minutes, right? And it costs you $225. And like, then you could like sue that person or like tell them to stop. Like, how much time is it going to rebuild that following? Because they're using your, your name now. I don't know. It's weird. It's very weird. So anyway. Okay, I'll stop. Um, so that's what the books are about. Um, and that's what our birth is about. It's about helping people um, and uh, making things okay for people. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So those are the things. All right. Anything else that we need to know for our booth? Um, pack some snacks. Snacks. Yeah. <laughs> snacks are important. Have you thought about carpet? If you're going to be standing a lot, your feet are going to hurt. I don't know if you thought about carpet. No, we haven't thought about carpet. What about the, like, the, don't they give you, like, a table? There's, like, a they table. They a six-foot-long table by default, and it's six feet by 20, no, 24 it, inches. Yeah, I was thinking 24 inches, yeah. 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 So we like a to... standard six-foot table. And you have to drape that. You can't leave it uncovered. Yeah, so we're going to do that, I think. We're going to just do yeah. that and sit with our books. And they'll give books. you two chairs. Yeah. But if you want to have like different conversation areas, you can bring those. Yeah. Right. We bought a ton of furniture last year. It nearly killed us again because there was a whole lot. There was a big brouhaha. It was a lot. It was just a lot. It was a lot. We bought a couch, right? It was pink. I remember. It was, it was pink. It was great. It, it was, was comfortable. Great. It was comfortable. It, it didn't match our booth this year. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, yeah. So that's what we're doing. Well, I am so excited. I know it took up a whole hour. We're going to just talk for a short time. I'm so excited. I adore you guys. I cannot wait. We will be at your schoolhouse. We're bringing the quilting army with us, so we'll have people. So, again, it's so great. And um, I don't know. It's kind of scary how soon it is, I just have to say. So it's all good. Just keep breathing. Anyway. Cat. Cat was cat. Deep breaths. Two, Two breaths. weeks. Two weeks. Holy crap. It'll happen. Two weeks. Yeah. It's going to happen gonna whether we're awesome. ready or not. <laughs> all right it's gonna be great we'll just you know all right so schoolhouse and your booth and festival and you're gonna do all kinds of things there and you've got your following and it's exciting and you got stickers and products and scratchy things and that's cool the scratchy thing that was cool <laughs> you guys are getting really sophisticated is all i'm saying you're like highbrow now you know there's a spreadsheet for that i know look at you <laughs> Don't don't tell us that. We we still don't know that. <laughs> no, One of us is still going to cry in a bathroom today, I bet. <laughs> oh, we all cry in the bathroom. <laughs> There's just moments when you're just like, are you kidding? Like something weird will happen and you're like, I really don't even know how to deal with that thing that's now my problem, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> well, I adore you both. It's exciting. Oh, we're so glad. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing y'all too. Cool. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Well, hold on. I'm going to turn off the recording and uh, it's all good. Oh, are you cool with me posting this or are you not? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fabulous. So you've been listening to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. And I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gard. If you like this podcast, keep listening. Also, we have a Facebook group. Come join us. We talk about a lot of things. We also have an Instagram account. And of course, most importantly, I really hope you get a chance to quilt today.